Hello and welcome to the show. And as usual with me, I have the audience. Lovely ladies and a gentleman there to compliment them. And we have with us Sami Tomba. We also have on our menu Tuan Shinkafa the Mienggeta, which literally means groundnut soup. So you're going to have to stay with us to find out how we're going to make that. So without further ado, we're going to get on with it. If you travel around the world, you will find out that there is no place like Nigeria. Beautiful, very warm and friendly climate all year round. Largest concentration of black people in the world. Hospitable, vibrant and happy people. There is no place like Nigeria. A land of opportunities the biggest winner in the world of business and investments. Extremely rich in multicultural diversity. There is no place like Nigeria. Nigeria, truly the heart of Africa. From the Nigerian Tourism Development Corporation, tourism is life. Welcome back. Just a reminder that, as usual on the show, we have a special guest. So, I want you to look forward to that. So, for Tuan Shinkafa, the Miengeta, we have for the sauce, the soup, that is, we have this beef, biscuit bones. We're going to set that to boil so that it will start simmering away. Then I'll come back and let you know what we need for the rest of the soup. But then, we're going to also soak the rice. So, stay with us. set our tuo to start cooking. We've also set our meat so that the bone will get real soft. I will now tell you what we have to prepare this menu. We have uh, pepper with ginger and garlic pounded here. That's the unpounded form. I always show you that. I have yaji here which is a mixture of pepper and uh, ginger and other spices mixed together. This usually is considered a Hausa or Northern Spice mix. So this mix you can get from them. We have the doa, ground, seasoning cubes, of which I've put two in the meat already, crayfish, dry fish, we've used some onion in the meat, palm oil, but if you like groundnut oil, you can also use groundnut oil. But since we are using groundnut as our thickener, we are using palm oil as our oil sauce. Then we have tomato, alejo, which is spinach, sorrel leaves. We'll be right back.
thanks for staying with us. While our meat is cooking, we're going to cook, quickly chop these tomatoes into bits. When you chop the tomato like this, it adds color. We are going to use the rest of the onion. Okay, so that's done. We'll keep that and wait for the biscuit bone to cook some more. You know, the most important thing in me and get that is the biscuit bone. We want it to be nice and soft so that all that juice will come out of it. And when you're eating your me and get that, you know, okay, this is good stuff. So while we're waiting for the biscuit bone to soften some more, we're going to wash our dry fish. Now the first thing is, I wet it a little and then I put some salt on it. And I scrub it with the salt because dry fish has tiny grains of sand on it. Huh? Now if I put hot water, which is usually what most people do, if I put it in hot water, the hot water will melt the skin quickly and you cannot scrub with the salt. Now we are using the salt as the scrub for the fish. Okay, we'll get rid of that. And then see if we can pick the bones. That's why cooking is not easy, huh? <laughs> Like this, you can take care of all the as much of the bone as you can. You've been my guest in this kitchen for a number of times now. So what what's what's different from in today's menu? The dry fish. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's not been part of our past ingredients. Okay. Yeah. And we didn't blend our tomato. Yes. Yes. That's different too. We just cut in it. Once you've picked, picked the bones out like this, all you have to do now is give it another rinse and we're good to go. So we're ready to give this a wash. I will do that. Then when we come back, we're going to add everything else to the meal because I think our meat has been cooking long enough don't you go anywhere so we've given our dry fish a final rinse we are going to add it to our soup our meat has been cooking for a while now I'm also going to add the palm oil now Pepper with ginger and garlic, fresh pepper, and the dadoa, which is the dry and ground locust bean. We'll let that boil immediately it boils we're going to add the groundnut and then after the groundnut we'll add some of the tom the tomato and the onions the chopped tomato and onions then for the so it's coming up to a boil now we're cooking it on very slow heat very slow heat but in case this water gets soaked up by the rice we have hot water in the kettle 
when you're cooking your tuo rice, as the rice is cooking and it soaks up the water, when you want to add water, you should please put in hot water. It doesn't have to be boiling water, but at least it has to be hot. So you should have hot water on standby in the kettle or anywhere that you want to keep the water. As the rice is soaking up the water, you keep adding hot water so your tool doesn't drop in temperature. Okay, we've got that to boil now. So we begin to add. And because it's raw groundnut, you should add it as soon as your meat is ready. Because raw groundnut, of course, will take longer to cook than maybe fried groundnuts. But you can use fried groundnut too in this soup. But this is raw. last thing we're going to add to our sauce after we add this kayaji when we add the kayaji we're going to add crayfish to it crayfish is a constant in all my soups right yes. okay so we're going to add crayfish but this is optional it's just because I love crayfish this is really optional so we're going to add crayfish when we add the kayaji then we'll put alefo which is spinach and then we'll put sorrel leaves now sorrel leaves have a sour taste. They have a sour taste and we're going to find out what the food value of the sorrel leaf is. So stay with the show. Sorrel has many varieties. It is usually considered a garden herb. In northern Nigeria, sorrel is known as yakwa. It is used in soups, usually with spinach. It is also steamed and made into a salad with kulikuli. That is groundnut cakes obtained after oil extraction. Salt, pepper, onion, and tomatoes. It is quite a delicacy. The colorful and refreshing zobo is made from the dried calyx of the sorrel plant. The acidic or sour taste of sorrel is due to the presence of oxalic acid, which many say should be consumed in small doses. From a nutritional standpoint, sorrel has high levels of vitamins A, and see. Nigeria. They go and get matter waiting for ground now. I be say, make we stop to the kill ourselves. Say because I come from south, you come from north. You be Muslim, I be Christian. Ah uh ah, -uh, all of us are the same thing, you know. Make we no agree, make the devil spoil this better work. We got to stop on Nigeria. Nigeria now our own. This is better message from NTDC. So now you know a little bit about the sorrel leaves. Our soup is boiling away. I'm going to add our kanyaji now. In case that is not hot enough, we'll add some live peppers. Just throw them in. And last but not the least of the ingredients, except the spinach and the sorrel goes in. Two more seasoning cubes. And a little more salt. And now, here comes the tasting part. My director gets all excited when I'm about to do this. I don't know why, but we have enough salt, I think. We are good. We're going to add the sorrel leaf, the spinach, turn our tour, and then bring on our special guest. Stay with the show.
If you travel around the world, you will find out that there is no place like Nigeria. Beautiful, very warm and friendly climate all year round. Largest concentration of black people in the world. Hospitable, vibrant and happy people. There is no place like Nigeria. A land of opportunities. The biggest winner in the world of business and investments. Extremely rich in multicultural diversity. There is no place like Nigeria. Nigeria, truly the heart of Africa. From the Nigerian Tourism Development Corporation, tourism is life. It's now time to bring on our very special guest. I present to you Victoria Udoin, Mrs. Right. Yes. Thank you for coming to the show. Thank you for having me. All right. So you own a business. It's called Vidu Timeless Pearls and Corals. From the pearls and corals, I know it has to do with jewelry, and you're wearing a very lovely piece, by the way. Thank you. So tell us about it. Uh, Vidu Timeless Pearls and Corals produce jewelries, neck pieces, tiaras, bracelets, earrings from pearls, from corals, from gemstones, and um, quite a lot of things. All right. So, but when you say timeless, does it mean that you can have a piece that will you can pass from one generation to the other? That's what I read exactly. from when you put timeless in your profile. So. Um, if I have something old, I can bring it to you and you can make it new? Yes. There are some designs that would last and um, still be in vogue or fashionable for much longer time than most other styles. We can restring, we can package an old set to look as good as new. So, but you do this from... Uh, a business place or I have my studio right inside my house if you're trying to start something this is a business that you can do from home then yes while waiting for the money to come for a bigger space to be uh, to rent a place um, I make do with the space right in my sitting room all right so you you work from home and um, how about family life does that bother your work I try to organize my day that my business would not really run into my family time too. Okay, from this tiny bit you're wearing, if you have to work with something as tiny as that, you need to concentrate. You have like a, a space that you say, okay kids, you can't come into this space when I'm doing this work. How do you organize it? There are some designs that would actually have quite a lot of me, my time and my attention. And um, during such production, I have my kids who for some reason I'm very grown now, have them out of the space that I use. I understand that you've worked in the broadcast industry as well. Can you tell me a little bit about that and why you left the industry? Immediately after my school certificate in the 80s, um, while waiting for my university admission, I was uh, in the employment of NTA Channel 9 caliber and I was there for quite a while. I actually retired from NTA Channel 9. Wow, so how long did you stay there then? I had about 15 years stay with the television. So why did you leave? <laughs> I was trying to secure a transfer from Calabar to Abuja and that couldn't come through. So I decided to just call it off for then till I would turn 45 for my pensions to run. W would you be willing to share the reason why you were trying to get the transfer? Yeah, my husband is with foreign service and um, oftentimes I'll have to be on leave of absence. And I was in one while returning. It was um, a bit difficult for me to run two homes, a home at Calabar with Kate and myself. And my husband's office is just um, at Abuja, so I needed my employer to let me go over to join my husband, but there was just no vacancy for me to fill at that time there, so I couldn't hold on. 
so you 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 had to leave the job because you wanted your family to be together yes because so at that time the, i had a baby that was just one year and some months so that that's some of the sacrifice that women have to make for their to be to keep a family unit together so Certainly. and when when a, your husband goes on tours that is you, you intermittently in and out of the country is it as glamorous as you we all, all think it is well, um, I have chosen to be very supportive from the onset of my marriage and um, it takes me a bit off what I had planned. I, I had a career planned out to be in the broadcasting for a while and um, I cannot really say his work would let me do that over there because of course spouses are not allowed to work and um, for the time of uh, supporting his, uh, him to build his career, I needed to do a few things. I get to improve myself in some areas, and that led me into what I'm doing now, of course. All right. Well, so for these young people, what is the message in this, all of this? Can you, like, put it in a sentence? You have to get busy, not just for um, the sake of making money, but to get fulfilled, feel fulfilled, and um, be productive. Try to generate something and get um, some income out of it and um, some sort of satisfaction. I think a tour of duty for uh, an uh, average uh, member of staff of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is four years, right? No, three years. Three years, okay. Mm. So you go for three years, then they, you come back into the country. Is that good for your children? Yes, it does affect the children's education. Um, I have had instances where my kids are brought to classes lower than what we would have, they would have been in if we were in the country. So it does affect the, the young ones so very much. But it's just the price that we all have to pay in order to support our, our main to get to the pinnacle of their careers. Okay, so the women in foreign affairs, they're not just having a really glamorous life. There's a lot of sacrifice as well, right? Of course. All right. I think <laughs> you deserve a round of applause for making those sacrifices. So what, what do you do when you want to relax? I read. Oh, I listen you? to music. Okay, you're on my, on my page now. You love music. Yes, so what I kind do. of music do you listen to? Most time, gospel music. Okay, that's nice. That's interesting. Any good book that you've read lately? Stormy Omashan. Okay. I'm on Power of Prayers, Praying Parent, Stormy Omashan. You're really grounded in the family, which is something that our society really needs at the moment. When you have a family day out, what do you do? What's, what do you do for fun? Increasingly, it's getting difficult having all my kids, and myself and my husband together at once because they're in different schools. But what I do is, uh, if we can arrange my son to come over on vacation, um, we just plan where to go, look through the budget, and yeah, that decides, and uh, determines where we go. All right. Now, one last question. Where, where were you on tour of duty last, and what was the most important or most interesting thing that happened to you there? My last tour was to Japan, Tokyo for four years. The most exciting experience at Tokyo is um, the viewing of Sakura during the, the, the spring. And of course the girls' festivals in March and then the boys' festivals too in May. And um, it's, it's a lot of, um, lots of exciting memory anyway. So what is Sakura then? Sakura is a, a, a a, full, a flower, it comes in season. Uh, my interest was drawn to a tree that would lose its leaf completely and just starts um, blooming with just flowers. No I, leaves at all? No leaves until later. So you could see the, the pink uh, sakura in full bloom, just a pink or a purple or a white. And then the petals are as tiny as the snowflakes. A lot of interesting thing about Sakura. All right. And traveling must be interesting, no matter how you look at it. No, to me, I think not very. 
Oh, really? Years, <laughs> Can yes. you believe that? Okay. <laughs> different strokes for different yeah. pools. Victoria Odoen, thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you very much for having <laughs> me. So that's the size of our show today. Shortly, we're going to be eating two rice and me and get that, which is groundnut stew or groundnut soup, whichever way you want to call it. And we'll do this again. Thank you.